This is the story of how I pivoted not once, but three times in the course of six months, trying to fit in and how I could help other people, but also help myself. There are plenty of insights that you can take note of right now for yourself and for your business. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, I'm Veronica DiPolo, and with more than 15 years being a marketing strategist, you're going to experience the new way to promote your business with clear and unique messaging by giving you actionable marketing and messaging strategies that get you interested leads to transform the lives of your audiences so that you build up your brand with continuous momentum. Get ready because here's where we say no to outdated marketing strategies and society norms, and we say yes to change from the inside out. Welcome to the Branding Momentum Podcast. On March 9th, 2020, New York got locked down because of the pandemic. At the time, I was an image consultant with at least three to four years under my belt doing YouTube and I had a podcast called Personal Image Branding. Life was good, I can say. I just had finished a course with Amy Porterfield, how to learn how to create courses because I wanted to impact more people then, you know, move from those private clients. I had also come to realize that most of my private clients, although they did want the image consulting services, had, you can say, issues to resolve about their image. And their underlying problems were because how they saw themselves in the mirror or self-love and imposter syndrome and their body and their weight. You could say that I became a sort of a psychologist to them without being exactly one. Most of them have, you know, high level jobs and they're very active in social gatherings. They don't have time to sit around and go shopping or organize their wardrobes. So what really made me change from image consultant to personal branding was because they wanted more exposure. They needed to look good doing it, but also they wanted to increase their presence on social media and remain top of mind. So, you know, getting into speaking engagements or networking events to improve their personal branding. And I felt that because of my marketing background mixed with styling and all of my years of organizing events and doing trade shows that I could, you know, I could help them. Plus I had gone through a mental breakdown very recently. So I had the tools to help them. So I sat down and outlined a great program to learn about image appearance based on your body, how to find your unique style, not to copy, you know, not to be the copy version of somebody else. Also, you know, adding my little flair to learn more a little bit about etiquette and protocol because these were things that I learned working, you know, with House of States and various countries while I was doing the events. You know, maybe teach them how to find their story and who they want to be, how they want to be perceived, networking techniques in public and also on social media and design their brand and give them, you know, the tools to promote their know-how with ads. It all sounds amazing. And it was amazing then. But when I sat down to hear the news that we've been put on lockdown, my brain immediately went, I can't create this course. This is ridiculous. I can't create a course about networking and elevator pitches when we can't leave the house. So I turned off my mobile phone for like 72 hours. I didn't speak to a soul. I sat down and brainstormed like crazy. And I pivoted backwards and went back to what I knew how to do, which was events, because 
everybody was online right now and we needed to make money with events and i mentioned it to my business partners in panama and they liked the idea because by that time i was giving them crash courses on how to survive and create webinars and explaining them you know sales funnels and how they were you know working and how we can actually implement email marketing to our events we were going to be doing them online so they could implement that with with our clients in Latin America. And that course was called the Online Project Planner Blogs. And if you're curious, you can go back here on the podcast and listen to that because this podcast has had many names. <laughs> Anyways, and it was mainly a course to teach how to create online projects, meaning, you know, events and plan them from scratch, from start to finish, and to teach them how to get sponsorship to monetize with these virtual events. And by the time I had finished writing the entire course, I was already back in Madrid, where I used to live. And this is roughly end of May 2020. So in July, when I launched Although a lot of people were very interested and many people, you know, attended the webinars. I did like, I think six or eight, I can't remember. I saw two major problems. One was that my pricing was really high. It was around 997 euros. And number two, my messaging was completely off, completely off. Maybe now looking in retrospect, you know, I think the pricing was high because of the time that we were doing things, but in reality, it should have been higher. And I was, you know, because I was spilling all the tea and all the tactics and all the strategies because really to create events, people think it's easy, but when you want sponsors supporting your events, then has to become a different type of event. It's not easy. Not many people are out there giving courses on how to monetize and get sponsorships for events. So I thought at that time that the idea was pretty good. And the thing also was that we in our business, we organize very big events like world events that take five years to coordinate. So... Anyways, thankfully, I never got to present the course because the moment that I finished writing the program, I knew that I was not happy with it. Still, you know, I went ahead and I promoted it just to say that at least I'd given it a try. But what ended up happening was that it drained me mentally with the failure. And not so much the failure, but it was, it drained me because I had gone through all these changes, you know, two things already there. I have already pivoted twice in six months. So I really needed a mental break to rethink everything. And that's exactly how I got me where I live right now today, which is in Moraira, in the south of Costa Blanca in Spain, right? Very remotely, but that's how I got here. <laughs> So by August 2020, I came here looking to be near the sea because I really missed it. And although I was in New York and I could see a little bit of the reservoir and everything where I was, I really needed the rest as well. And I spent here like around 15 days and I stayed in this house that I had rented laying all day in the pool and only listening to music. I didn't want to think about the future or dwell on the past. I was only thinking like, what's for breakfast? What's for lunch? What's for dinner? What kind of wine I'm going to drink? That was it. I was on vacation and I needed to treat it like that and no thinking. So when I went back to Madrid, that's end of August, okay? I still had no clue what to do. I had to start exactly from scratch i had to get a new va reboot the business reinvent myself once again and the only logical pivot at the time was to go back to basics which is to 
go back to marketing because my background in marketing was a hundred percent oriented towards events, like how to promote events, get new leads for events, traveling to trade shows and networking, getting new leads for our business. I knew from my previous experience with the online project box that I needed to work on my communication skills and my messaging because what I was saying wasn't really landing with people. They wanted it, but they didn't buy it. So I figured that if I have a communication problem, maybe more people have the same struggle. So I understood that what we say should impact and change people's perspective from them to really invest, that we should not preach and lecture and sound like a car salesperson when you are trying to promote your business. People are not going to buy if you have a pretty face or a nice branding or a great website, right? People are going to buy because of these 10 things that I'm going to mention you right now. One, promote your business to remain top of mind that you are the expert in what you do so that the word of mouth effect is so much easier. Number two, promote your business by touching their heart and connecting with them. Number three, promote your business because your service values are aligned with ideal potential clients. Number four, promote your business consistently. If people don't know what you do, how can they buy your stuff? Number five, promote your business as to what would you change in your industry today? What you think is the old way of doing things and show them the new way transform their lives number six promote your business by showing them how your services can actually stop their suffering number seven promote your business by repeating your messaging people need to hear information more than seven to 14 times to actually know and understand exactly what you do number eight Promote your services by documenting content, not by creating it. Number nine, promote your business by not promoting yourself, but the emotion. And number 10, promote your business by not pushing people. When you sound like a salesperson, people tend to pull away. Bottom line, to make a business work, and have people to buy from you, solve a problem that maybe you have or solve a problem that you went through something similar because people actually do connect with that. I hope this insight into my pivoting helps you understand that failure doesn't define us at all. What we do with it is what will set you and your business apart. I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope to see you same time same place next week bye bye